Fighting out of Dublin! Ivan! The Notorious! Connor, you're very welcome. How does it feel to be at the Aviva, a place that you've said yourself that you hope when the UFC returns, you'd actually like them to host an event here? Yeah, it feels it feels right. It feels like it's meant to be, um, uh, and to have a <laughs> to have a clear picture of like a football sta filling out a football stadium, bring the UFC back here and doing this, and then to come out here and step on that pitch and feel it, you know. I got goosebumps, you know, I got that feeling that this is within reach now, so I'm just going to keep going, keep keep hitting the gym, keep training hard, keep putting on performances that will uh, ensure that they come back here and do this football stadium. I believe the demand is there. Uh, I believe it will happen. So tell us about your journey through martial arts. Can you believe the small kid who just wanted to defend himself has turned out to be a phenomenal world-class mixed martial artist? Um, yeah, I, I, can, I can believe because I did believe. And I put in the work to make it happen. But, you know, I was just a normal kid growing up and, and fights would happen. F every boy gets into fights. I was never bullied. You know, it was just fights would happen as a kid. You're growing up out on the street playing football or whatever. Fights would happen. But for me, it stuck in my head. Maybe if, if a fight happened, another boy would have just left and he would have forgot completely about it. But for me, I dwelled on it. What way should I have moved there? He done this. What, maybe if I had done that. I would have, I would have turned out better. You know, th those type of things occupied my mind. So, I just, it begun to build in my mind that this is what I wanted to become really good at. This I wanted to be able to defend myself in any situation, any movement, any scenario. So I went from gym to gym, kickboxing, boxing, grappling, wrestling, just trying to ultimately trying to learn different ways the body could move to attack and to defend, and then it became it be obviously becomes an obsession. And before you know it, you're headlining in football stadiums, just like that. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned there you, you moved around from gym to gym. So how did you end up with John Cavan at SPG? Um, yeah, I, m I moved around from gym to gym. You know, every gym I went to was always, they had a set way. Every gym had a set way of doing things. Don't do it this way, do it that way. So that was just a normal thing that I thought, I thought just people just have their own set way and you must do it that way. You must stand this way. You must kick this way. You must punch this way. But with John, when I went to John, and I met, met my coach, John Cabinet at Straight Blast Gym, it wasn't like that. He had a more open mind, and he encouraged different movements. And I'd never experienced that before. I'd never heard a coach say that to me before. And that stuck in my head. You know, I thought to myself, you know, this guy is, is, is thinking outside the box. You know what I mean? That he has a vision that everything works, and, and he... It encourages every movement because ultimately there is a time and a place for every single move. So I just ha I just knew when, when I met John and I, when he spoke, it made complete sense to me. And that was it. I stuck with him and he stuck with me and the rest is history. And was it meeting John and training at SPG? Is that when it shifted from learning martial arts to seeking perfection in human movement? 100%. It's when I, it's when I start thinking of a career in it. So I never cared. I don't care. Still, I really don't care about sport. I got in it for street. You know what I mean? I was thinking about the street. I wanted to be able to defend myself in any situation. But when I met John and then the UFC, start hearing about the UFC, then I started thinking, you know what? There's, there's a career. Maybe I can make something out, out, out of this. Well, what else am I going to do? I don't really want to do anything else. I don't want to get a job. I don't want to have to get up and have I don't want to listen to a boss or, or do all that. You know, so th this is an option for me. So I stuck with it, and John encouraged it. John believed that made John believed in me, and made me believe in myself that we could go and do this. But before us, there was no other Irish man. There was no the U. As far as the UFC were concerned, Ireland didn't exist. So it was still just a dream for us. You know what I mean? But definitely, when I when I met John, and when I started training in straight blast gym, I started realizing I can I can make a career out of this. I I can do something that hasn't been done before. I can show the Irish people true martial arts, something they have never seen before. So that's what we are in the process of doing. And very quickly in your career, you built up a solid reputation and by your fourth, third or fourth fight, you were headlining local shows. Mm. But then you stepped away for two mm. years. Um, 
What made you step away? But mm. more importantly, what made you come back? Um, it, you know, uh, you're a young kid. You're just floating in and out. I was going out with my friends. I was, you know, uh, you're not a million percent focused when you're a kid. You're off and doing other stuff, you know. So that, I was just a normal kid. I, I lost one and then I went. I said, you know what, I don't want to do this anymore. Uh, and drifted off. But then, you know, but even though I, was all, I wasn't competing, I was still always in my head that I was going to do it. I still always had in my head that I will get to the UFC. I will, I will make it. Even though I wasn't actually pursuing it, it, the vision was still in my head, and then I just came back and and carried on again. You know, because sometimes I drift off, sometimes you drift back and forth, and that was it. But then, any time I drift off, John would always reel me back in, um, and 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 reinforce the dream. You know what I mean? Let it say, you know, we can do it. Let's let's do it. This is what you need to do. You, we, we need to show up here. We need to put in more hours than everybody. It needs to be every single second of your life. There cannot be no outside. And then that's what happened. So we're talking 2008, 2009, when you even you weren't even you know fully committed to mixed martial arts. Mm. You were still dreaming of being a UFC fighter and yeah. UFC champion. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. And it's well documented that uh, your mother reached out to John mm -hmm. Cavanagh. That was mm -hmm. a huge uh, yeah. part in you mm -hmm. uh, coming back. It must have been a really brave decision for an Irish mammy to send her son mm -hmm. off to an MMA gym. I mean, mm. it, was that because she was so concerned about the path you were going down yeah. or because she recognised how talented you were? Yeah, I think it was more concerned about the path I was going down. And she recognised that any time I was in the gym, I was happy. You know, whatever's going on in my life, good or bad, I go to the gym, I exercise. And that for me is... Exercise is the best form of medication. I always felt happy after a workout or after training. And she obviously saw that. So when I was stopped training, I was hanging around with the wrong people or whatever. You know, I wasn't as happy as I would be. So she wasn't, in her head, it was, she obviously wasn't thinking I'm sending him into an MMA fight. She just wanted me back in the gym and back training and back doing what I loved. Healthy. You know what I mean? And, and healthy, of course, a healthy lifestyle. One thing about martial arts, people can, say it's people can say this fight game is dangerous and it's brutal, but my mind is strong. I'm fit in body and mind. And that's something that not a lot of other careers can give can give to a person so my mother i love my mother dearly i love it the bits you know she reached out to john <coughs> and john as well came up and it was just it was a perfect storm it was all a perfect storm to to get me back and and seeing the way me me, me ma reached out and got john up and then john came up and seeing these people that are putting that time into me and putting that faith in me that made me think you know what I'm going to do them proud. I'm going to do them proud. I said to John that night, I said, I'm going to put an extra floor on that gym. You know what I mean? I'm, right now, you know, I'm, I'm securing my family's future here. I don't want my family, I want my man and dad to retire and, and live comfortable now. You know what I mean? That, that's what I'm doing it for, for my family's security so they don't have to do absolutely nothing or answer to nobody. Right. And once you were back then, you were back with a bang, you started putting the win streak together. And this is almost around the time then, by 2009, you started narrating your own career. You started asking for title shots and asking for things. Mm. And this is when it, it kind of started happening. Um, did you feel that, okay, the wins are great, but now I actually start to, I need to start making moves here. I need titles. I need to start getting on a serious road towards the UFC. Was there a conscious decision? Um, no, I, 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 there wasn't a conscious decision. I was just, I don't know, I was just training. And if I felt the belt was in reach, I was asking for the belt. And I was maybe as you grow, you get a little bit more confident or a little bit more cocky, whatever way you want to put it. Um, I was just being myself. I'm a cocky little kid from from Dublin. I'm just being myself. I didn't. I never set out to say, if I say this, it's gonna it's gonna mean this. You know, I just carry on. I say what 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 feels right at at the time. So could this story have played out the way it did uh, if you hadn't ended up at SPG with John Kavanagh, or, or or is John the secret sauce in all this? Yeah, I, th I think it was just meant to be. I think I don't think I, I don't I don't think someone would have kept me, kept my attention as as much as John would have. You know what I mean? Would have kept me in the gym as much as John did. So, no, I don't think it would happen if if I didn't if I didn't meet John. It's it, I'm grateful every day for that for that for that time and, and just everything. I'm grateful for everything, every situation. Even when I moved from Crumlin to Lucan when I was 17, that was another lifesaver for me as well because I moved away from everything. While everyone else was getting caught up in stuff, I, I could get away. And I, and I was up miles away in Lucan, and it was miles away to me. When I was living in Crumlin, when I first moved to Lucan, it was like moving to the sticks out of the country. I was away from everyone I knew, so I was literally sitting in a room on my own. You know what I mean? But I, I was with myself and my thoughts a lot at that time. And then any time I'd go training, because John's was in Rakul at that time, 
I was just going to the gym in Rakhiola and then home to Luke and I had nothing else to do. So it, it helped me. Uh, all these little things that happened just shaped shaped it. And, and I'm grateful for, for, for each and everything that has happened. Can you remember how you found out that you were signed to the UFC? Was there a JFK moment that you'll never forget where you were when the UFC came calling? Yeah, I don't... Yeah, see, I, don't, I, I can't remember, yeah, because we got some bad news about a teammate of mine that couldn't compete anymore. So, you know, what? I was thinking, you know what, fuck this game. I don't want to do this shit anymore. What am I going to do this? And then something happens and I can't do it no more. So I had packed it in again. Yeah, yeah. I packed it in again, you know, yeah. but it was only a couple of weeks. I was like, you know what, I'm not, I didn't show up training, I didn't show up to do classes or anything. I, was, I used to teach the boxing every Tuesday at 7 o'clock and John was away in Iceland at the time or away in America somewhere teaching, teaching. So I hadn't been in, in there in a couple of weeks and then the phone rang one night and I was about to go out with my friends and, and I was like, it was John and I didn't answer it. I wouldn't answer it, I was like, I'm going to get, he's going to give out to me because I haven't been teaching the classes, I haven't been showing up. And then it rang and it rang and it rang, I was like, Nah, fuck it, I'm not going back. I'll, just, I'll figure something else to do. Um, and then I just answered it. It kept ringing, so I answered it. How do you feel about making your UFC debut in nine weeks? Um, and then that was that. I put the phone down, I went home. And then I showed up at the gym the next day and put the walk in, and that was that. I just kept going, you know. We're all on our own, we're all on our own path here. Everyone is on their own little journey, whether to, you know. And I, this, is, this is my journey. My teammate was on a different journey, so I just have to understand that. So that was that. And once you became a contracted UFC fighter, did you think, that's it, I've made it? Or did you think, right, the work actually starts here? Yeah, I definitely think, I, 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 you know, I always knew I only need one chance. I always felt I was better than everybody. I always felt all I needed was to get in there once, just give me one shot and I'll take it home. I'll steal it every time. And then that, so, so when I got the call, I knew I wasn't hanging around. I was going to call out everyone in the division. I was going to make my way up to the top as fastly as, as fast as possible because I felt I was ready. Um, I felt I was better than these people. So, but obviously the work always is still, you know, it, it, there's always work to be done, you know. So if anything, I suppose it definitely got me to the gym that bit more, you know, that now, now it's there. Now all these dreams that I've been having are actually there in front of me. So I work, I work towards it. And you, you, you talk about work and uh, the amount of training you do. Did you step it up once you got the call from the UFC? Did you train as you had been training or did you step it up? I think we all stepped it up. I think the whole gym stepped it up. Every single fight, the whole gym go to a next level. When Sweden happened, the level went through the roof because everyone saw one of us made it. You know what I mean? The dream is real. An Irish man's got a win inside the UFC. They know we have a path now. There's a path. So everyone in the gym upped that game. So we, all, we continuously got better and better. And the game changes. Things change now. It's, it's different, you know. But you must evolve with it. You know what I mean? You, or you'll get left behind. So our gym has evolved with the growth of it. You know what I mean? Right. So everyone has upped their game. There's, it's very competitive. Everyone is out to chase the dream. Um, and it's a great time. So s some of your teammates felt the UFC was more accessible because you had got there. Mm, exactly. And, and, then, and then they worked hard. So I show up at the gym. Now I'm the UFC guy. Now they want to beat the UFC guy. So they know. And again, it's nothing personal. They need to, they need to feel that. They need to be able to... They, they go in against me or go in s against someone else in the UFC and, and then they feel, I'm actually, I can do this. You know what I mean? Mm. And, and that, that's for their mind, you know, it's nothing personal. We come in, everyone's come in and trying to beat each other and, and it's competitive, you know, but it's perfect. It's, 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 that's why the level has gone through the roof. That's why we're getting so, so good so fast. Iron sharpens <coughs> iron, as they say. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so your debut UFC uh, in Sweden, um, a 67 second destruction of Marcus Brimage. Um, you pretty much stole the show, it's fair to say. Uh, even though your fight was on the prelims, it was the only prelim fight that made it onto the, the main card broadcast then. Mm. Uh, you obviously got the knockout bonus as well. You mm. came away with your 60 Gs. Dana, 60 Gs, baby! <laughs> How did you feel when you were walking out of the, the Ericsson Globe and Arena that night? Yeah, I felt, it felt right again. Like I felt when I walked out there, it just felt right. It felt like it was meant to be. I knew I was going to do it. I brought, 
I, you know, prelim guys don't get on a press conference either, you know, but I brought my suit, I brought everything I prepared. I knew all you need, uh, like I said, give me one chance and I'm going to take it home. So uh, they gave me one chance and I took it home. When did you notice that the UFC were treating you a little bit different to other fighters with just one fight under their belt? You, you seem to be getting a little bit more treatment, uh, better treatment than guys who had just literally debuted for the largest mixed martial arts promotion in the world. Um, I, don't, I don't know, but I mean, I don't know because I can't compare it to anyone else because I don't know about what they've done for other people. You know, I just know what they're doing for me. What I do know is that I feel that they're putting a lot of faith in me. So again, that drives me to work, you know what I mean? To prove, to prove my worth, to prove their faith in me is correct. And that's what I'm doing right now. And how special was it to get the blackout <coughs> treatment for the walkout in Boston? Uh, I, honestly, I didn't know I got the blackout treatment until after. All I knew was they told me to take a couple of steps back into the arena and we're gonna film you walking out from here. So I knew something was up. I knew, I, that they, they only filmed that walk for the champions. You know what I mean, that, that through the arena walk. So I, I, I didn't know anything about the blackout. To be honest, I'd never even heard of the blackout before this all happened. So it didn't really mean jack. It, meant, meant, it didn't mean too much to me. But again, looking back on it, it didn't mean too much to me in the moment because I didn't even know. But looking back, it was actually phenomenal like, to see, to walk through and see it over in America, in the middle of America, and there's Irish flags everywhere. And you're walking through the crowd, and there's people in Irish rugby jerseys, there's people dressed as leprechauns, and all this shit. But that, that was phenomenal. That's something I can look back on. Forever, you know what I mean? So definitely, it meant a lot to me when it was done, but at the time, I hadn't a clue. Yeah, and your second fight in Boston was obviously against Max Holloway, another mm. young up-and-coming prospect. Uh, you took a, to a decision, one decision, but midway through the second round, uh, you popped your ACL. ACL, your MCL was strained, and you had a posterior horn meniscal tear. Mm. It's fair to say that in most other sports, the play mm. would have been stopped and the stretcher would have been mm. in and you would have been carted out. Mm. Was there ever a second in your mind where you were thinking, I, can't, I actually can't finish this? No, because you're prepared. You're prepared for things to happen. Anything can happen in this game. There is no limitations on this. There's no, you know, you, you must be prepared for injuries to happen. And you, I didn't even know the severity of it. I just thought, I don't know, I just felt my knee pop. I'd never felt that before, a hurt, and I was unstable. That was all I, all, I, all I knew, but stopping wasn't in my head. I just took it to a place where I could control it, and that's what I done. And how does a guy who's so focused on his career and so concerned with putting work in, how does he cope with rehabilitation and time on the sideline? Um, yeah, it was tough. It's been a tough couple. It was, been, it was a tough nine months, eight, nine months, you know. E well, six months really before I could start proper grappling and stuff like that. Again, exercise is, is the best form of medication for me, you know. So I was just trying to keep, keep busy with ex any exercise I could do, I was doing. I was really focused on my rehabilitation work. I was out in LA, but I was on my own for the most part. And it, it was it was tough, but I just carried on. Again, like when I left for a while, I left the sport for a while and was off floating around, I still always had that belief in my head that I was gonna get to the UFC. And I still I always had that belief in my head that I was gonna return. And not only return, return better than anybody has ever returned before. Many people have taught their ACL and, and returned to combat. But not many people have returned better than they left. And I returned better than I left. I was throwing, I'm throwing more shots than I, than I threw b before. You know, I, so if anything, they come back the same, if not a little bit worse. I came back throwing shots that I've never thrown before. It was all a blessing in disguise. There's something else in it. This where, this is where it should be at, yeah? This place should be for combat, not for football, not for rugby. This should be, this should be for combat. It is something else though. It's top of the range, this place. James, I'd say that Lucas Aid bottle's there in a while, is it? Doesn't look the healthiest, does it? <laughs> Who's 11? Oh yeah, and Shay Given. Dead. Maybe, maybe stick me a pair of gloves or something up. Soon, maybe, what? The belt, good one, the belt and the gloves. Nah, this is brilliant. I'm happy I came out here now. 
And f from the moment you signed with the UFC, you made a point of saying that you were going to drag the UFC back to Ireland. And it, it ended up being a phenomenal night. Obviously, you beat Diego Brando in your fight. The four SPG fighters went undefeated. Mm. And it was a great night for Irish MMA. The five Irish guys uh, mm. went unde und undefeated on the night. Were you aware that this was happening uh, while you were 100%, I'm, I watched every fight on the card. Do we have a screen in the... They have a screen in the dressing room for us to watch, so I could I could watch everything. But uh, before we left the arena, Paddy, the main event people and, and the co-main, they don't leave till later on in the day. Whereas Paddy Houlihan, they had left earlier. So when we were waiting to get on the bus to go to the arena, we were looking at Paddy Houlihan on the fo on a phone. It was just phenomenal. The whole event, from start to finish, everyone on the card done themselves justice between the back and forth fights to the comeback f fights. You know what I mean? Cahill's comeback. You know, everything was just perfect. And then you have the crowd on top of it. The crowd was unbelievable. The whole war, the whole fighting world know about the Irish crowd now. You know what I mean? It, it's set in stone that this is a great nation to come over and host a show. You know what I mean? I set out to bring them back. I set out to help my teammates get on. Ultimately, they, they do that themselves. I can't take credit for nothing like that. These, these, my teammates put in their own work and followed their own path. But as far as bringing it back and the whole spectacle, it was all perfect. What, what I set out to do and what I said I was going to do, I said I was going to do it and then I went out and done it. But with that, it's done. I'm over it now. I'm not going to stare at it. You stare at your past and you'll end up staying there. It's okay to look back and admire it, but you carry on. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not in the business of staring, staring back at it. You know what I mean? I'm getting lost back there. It's people say you can. People say a loss can make or break a fighter, but trust me, a win can also make or break a fighter because they get comfortable with a with a win. People can get comfortable with a with a win, and 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 slack off then, slack off on the training, slack off on the diet. They've won one. They're winners now. That's not me. You know, you sleep on a you sleep on a win and you'll wake up with a loss. So I just carry on, keep doing what I'm doing. And that's why this turnaround is so good for me. Vegas, straight away. The fighting Irish head to the fighting capital. It's, it's perfect. Continue on this path. The freight train straight to the top. And you mentioned there that uh, now the whole world knows about the Irish fight fans and how, how good they are. Dana White mentioned in the post-fight press conference that he was getting texted by fighters from mm. all over the world mm. looking to get... Tell on you one thing, he wasn't getting texted from fighters looking to fight me. <laughs> but the fighters were texting him saying, next time there's a card in Dublin, mm. uh, stick me on it. What yeah. sort of reaction did you get from... I know you, you spoke to Lorenzo Fertitta afterwards mm -hmm. and Dana. What, what type of reaction were you getting considering you were part of the... You know, the return story. From who? The fans or from Dana? From everyone, from fighters, from you. Yeah, UFC it was exactly. phenomenal. This exactly. is it. It was a successful event. It was one of the most successful events in UFC history. It was the fast, one of the fastest selling. It was the most, one of the most watched. The, the UFC Fight Pass platform that they have, it's an online thing where you go and watch the fights. It was the most viewed. It was a success all around. The whole event was phenomenal between the fighters, the fans, the production, everything. It just went to a T. So we celebrated after the, after the fight. I went to the Four Seasons, sat down with Dana, sat down with Lorenzo, toasted a whiskey and celebrated success. And then we discussed more business. You know, we carry on again. You don't stay there. You, you go on and in, in Vegas again. I met with Lorenzo. I sat down. We discussed more business and we carry on. This is it. I'm not stopping here. Trust me when I tell you this. I'm only warming up. You can get used to this face. And just talking about the fight itself then, uh, it was pretty quick work in the end. Um, how did you feel during the fight? Was the knee okay? You know, Brandao was a bit of a wild man. Did he mm. catch you with anything? Mm. You know, how were you during the fight? I, f I, felt, I felt great. I felt comfortable. But walking out before, I was bouncing around. I, I just felt, again, I felt right. I felt like I was put here to do this. When I'm in there, I feel calm. I feel composed. I knew he was beat before the fight. I could see it in his eyes, the same way I see it in Dustin's eyes. They're beaten men, they're broken men when I'm looking at them. Um, and he, he was beaten long before he stepped into that, into that cage, so I just went in and put him out, put him out of his misery. Always kind of just in range, but far enough away from danger as he starts teeing off. Brandon goes down. Brandon looks hard, this could be the end. This could be an early stoppage. So moving on to your next fight, uh, Dustin Poirier, 
Uh, mm -hmm. UFC 178 on September 27th in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. He's a very similar record to you. He's 16 mm -hmm. and three. Mm -hmm. uh, he's never been knocked out, mm -hmm. but yet you say that his mm -hmm. weakness is his chin, and mm -hmm. you're gonna you're gonna knock him out. Mm -hmm. What why what have you seen? Or um, all you gotta do is look past look at look back at his previous fights. Every time he fights, he gets dropped to one knee. You know what I mean? The chin can only take so many cracks before it deteriorates. He seems to me a fighter that probably spars a bit too much rather than learn. You know what I mean? And I feel he's deteriorating. If, if his skill level has stagnated, it's remained the same, if not, if not dropped a little bit, and his chin has certainly got, got less. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to prove that. I, I don't believe he's on, on my level. I don't hit like these other featherweights. Um, so I'm going to crack him and he's going to drop and that's it. And you were recently in Las Vegas for the uh, UFC 178 Media Day and you would have been sitting not too far away from Dustin. Did you talk to him backstage or what sort of vibes did you pick up off him? Um, I, didn't, I didn't speak to him, you know, we came in the media thing for in, in Vegas was the first time we came face to face and he put his fists out like that and I went to his head to head. He's been talking a lot. I know I talk, but he's also been talking. He's been talking all shit on Twitter, saying all this stupid shit. But when it came face to face, when it came man to man, he backed down. There wasn't a peep out of him. So when you go face to face with a man and he bows before you, you don't advance on it. You pat him on the head and carry on. So that's what I done. And then the Jones, DC, uh, that that whole fight, that that was crazy as well. You know, again, two men, two emotionally charged men with a lot on the line, a lot of money, a lot at stake. Emotions ran high, and, and a, f a fight broke out. This is the fight business. These things happen. But with me and Dustin, I didn't feel the need to. I felt like he was broken already. He, he was timid. So I just faced off and then left. Well, what did you think when Jones and Cormier were, were going at it? Because you can see you quite clearly in the background, mm. uh, having a good laugh about the whole mm. thing. Um, I think a lot of people, when you squared off to Brando at the way in in Dublin, mm. people thought that that might tip over mm. the edge. Um, well, if there was no one there, it would have. You know, there should be people there. This is There's a lot at stake. It's an emotional game. You know what I mean? So there's people... It's up to the staff, the, the UFC staff, that need to be there to separate or to keep keep it calm. But backstage, we were nearly fighting. He was pacing around with his flag and and I was pacing around with my flag. It was a weird... It was weird, yeah, but he, he's, a, he's a live one. He's, he's, he's a wild kid from the favelas in Brazil, from the slums in Brazil. So, you know, I knew if a situation happened backstage, I was going to be ready. I told myself that beforehand. If something breaks off, I'm ready to go and I'm going to let them know. Some people think it's all for the cameras, but it's not for the cameras. We were going back, we were going to fight backstage and that was that. Then when we got out, it was spilled out onto the weigh-in area. Then even after the weigh-ins, he threw a bottle at my head and I just slipped it. And I cracked off the thing. But it was a full bottle. It would, have, would, have, would have, it would have probably messed me up, to be honest. But this is it, you know. Um, this is the fight game. We're here to fight. We're not here to make friends, we're not here to shake hands, we're not here to pose, we're here to fight. And just on that then, you've, uh, like you've been calling Dustin uh, P-Head, mm -hmm. you've also had a couple of choice words for some of the other uh, featherweights in the division, like Cub Swanson's an old man, he looks like mm -hmm. Hans Molman, uh, <laughs> Clay Guida and Nick Lenz are boring, uh, you don't even know who Eric Koch is. Um, yeah. Is that... Is that, uh, again, like you say, part of the fight game? Uh, or is it just you don't want to have friends in the featherweight division? Or you can't? Yeah, have I have my you? friends. I, I'm, I'm 26. I've made all the friends I, I want. You know what I mean? I have my small circle of people that I listen to, and my small circle of friends. I don't need any more friends. I'm here to conduct business in there. You know what I mean? And again, I, I believe all of those are, are facts. I believe he has a pea-shaped head. If you look at his head, it's, a, it's shaped like a pea. It's a weird-looking head. So they're fact. As far as I'm concerned, it's a fact. Cub does look a bit like Hans Molman. If you look at Hans Molman and then look at Cub, they look similar. Again, these are facts. Clay Guida is a boring fighter. He lays and he holds and looks to stall in positions. <coughs> Again, these are facts. If they're not facts, then, then show me, then prove to me that they're not facts. But it's, it's not trash talk, it's not promotion. It's fact. If you ask me about someone, if you ask me about their style or anything like that. I'll give an honest opinion. I'll give an honest answer. Some people can't handle it, but that's not my business. You've visualized a title shot and you've said it'll come before the end of the year and you've specifically targeted the 28th of December, the end of the year show for the UFC. Uh, are you on track? Do you still see that? And do you actually think it's going to happen? Yeah, I, I believe I believe it's there. It's it's in my head. We, we will see what way it plays out. There's a title fight. The title fight is six weeks after my fight. 
who knows, one of them could slip on a banana peel. One of them could fall. You know what I mean? And then they'll then they'll bring in the handsome Irish kid that brings it brings in all these numbers that sell more pay per views than both of them combined. Let's bring in that guy. And then all of a sudden I'm in a title fight. So there's there's one route. The next route, that, that fight could happen. Six weeks after my fight, that fight could happen. And then they schedule me for the title fight at the end of December. There's routes there for it to happen. But we'll see, again, through all the other shit, it's about getting better. Nothing else matters except me showing up at the gym every single day and putting in the work to get better. To get a better understanding of movement, to get a better understanding of this game. Everything else means nothing. Even after your impressive victory in Dublin, some of the US media outlets were still writing things like you're, you're more, you're getting recognition more due to the hype than what's on your mm. resume. Um, how do you feel about that when it's almost like people don't believe the hype mm. around Conor McGregor? How do you feel about that? Um, again, I don't really, I, don't, I can't hear it. It's hard to hear from where I'm at. I can't hear, I don't, I don't read none of that. I have my I I I have my sp my set team, my circle, my girlfriend, my coach, my family, my friends, my teammates. I listen to them. I don't listen to nobody else. I don't read nothing else. As far as I'm concerned, there's no such thing as an accomplished critic. They're, everybody's a critic. You know what I mean? Everybody has an opinion on it, but there's no such thing as as an accomplished critic. So I don't pay attention to what people say. You know, good or bad, it means nothing to me. I, I listen to my circle and I carry on again. Nothing else matters except getting better, showing up at the gym and improving. I can't hear nothing else. And you say that you don't listen to other people, but certainly a lot of people listen to you because you, you, you come out with some gems, like when you're asked about pressure, you say that pressure creates diamonds. Uh, when you're talking about fighters calling you out, you say everyone wants it till they get it. That's my personal favorite. Uh, when you were talking about the Irish MMA, you said uh, we're not here to uh, take part, we're here to take over. Where do these come from? Do you put time into creating these no. gems, or do they just fall off the? Again, the you mark? again, it's people say it's trash talk, or it's building hype, or it's promoting a fight. But to me, it's stating fact. Pressure creates diamonds. That that's a fact. In the, in them caves and shit, doesn't the pressure is what creates the diamond, right? So that's a fact. And uh, most of the one I'm saying. Uh, we're not here to take part. We're here to take over. I'm not here to take part. I'm not here to shake a guy's hand and be the token Irish guy. I'm here to kill everyone in the division, to obliterate everyone in my path. That's fact. What was the other one? There was another one? Everyone wants it until they get it. That's fact. Oh, oh, Diego Brandel wanted the fight. He was talking like he wanted the fight, but when we came face to face, when we came man to man, he was a shell. He was broken. Same thing with Cole Miller, talking all of this, calling me out on, on the post-fight. And then he gets it. And then he doesn't want that anymore. Same thing with Dustin. He, does it. he, he acted like he wanted it. He was saying all this stuff uh, throughout the Diego Brandel fight like he wanted it. And then guess what happens? He gets it. Now, now here's your opportunity. Now we're face to face and we're man to man. Now what? And he's timid. He backs down. He's, so these are all facts to me. I, I, I'm stating, stating fact as far as I'm concerned. They just, have to be, they just happen to be one line dingers that you could... <laughs> you could Paint, a, uh, paint on the side of a building, which they have been doing. Have you seen that one? That There's a picture of me and I'm like that and there's a king's crown. I was like, we're not here to take part, we're here to take over. That just happens to be, that just happens to be, but I'm just stating fact as far as I'm concerned. And the fact that um, some of the media outlets think you're, you're more about hype, um, mm. but you, 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 you've constantly said through, the, 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 through this interview that it's all about the work for you. So in terms of the work you've put in, uh, and the work, you know, down the down the line. How much better can Conor McGregor get? I'm, I'm only getting better. I'm only scratching the surface. Like, are we talking John Jones good, Anders Anderson Silva good? I'm only scratching the surface, but I'm still better than every one of them. Greatest of all time, still. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. I'm setting my. I'm set. I set my sights high. You know what I mean? I I have. I'm taking over the game, in every way, shape, and form. And money is obviously, um, you know, a constant theme, and you, you, you've you've made no uh, secret yourself that you're in it to make money. Mm -hmm. um, it, how much of a distraction is the money, and the fashion, and the award ceremonies? How much of a distraction is that type of stuff away from, from training? <laughs> yeah, um, you're damn right. I'm in it to make the money. This is prize fighting. I'm in it to get rich, fast, and then I'm in it to get out. So. 
But again, like I said, I need to forget about all that, push it all to the side and focus on improvement. And that will ultimately bring the money. You know, I si only recently signed a new deal with, with the UFC. You know, I'm, I'm one of the big dogs now. You know what I mean? When I win the gold, I'm top two on the roster. I'm top two paid on the roster. You know what I mean? So people can say whatever they want about what way I've gone about things, but the way I've gone about it has worked. Mm -hmm. And I'm in the business of securing my own future, my family's future, and, and, and that's it. You know, that, that's what I'm in it for. That, the fight game doesn't last long. Competitive fighting doesn't last long. Learning martial arts and training is for life because that's medication to me. So I will do that forever. But as far as the fight game, I'm in it to get all the money, all the belts, and then I'm gone. One thing John Kavanagh has always said about his fighters is that he hopes they make it big, they make a lot of money, and they get out early and healthy. Um, how long more do you think you'll be in the UFC? It's hard to say. It's hard to say. Who knows? Who knows what, 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 what will happen? Like, is there a point where you say, there, that's it, that's enough? Like, is it... Is I'll definitely be smart. Is it dual title? I will never stay in there longer than I should. I'm a smart man. I'm, sm I'm smarter than I look. I will not stay in, stay in the fight. It's a dangerous business. Get in, get rich, get out. I won't, I won't stay in it longer than, longer than I have to. How long that takes, I can't, put a, I can't put a time on it because it feels easy to me right now. It feels like I'm going to steamroll through everybody right now and, and, and so that's it I'll, I'll just steamroll through everybody and carry on and then I'll decide what to do it's probably hard to think about it while you're in it exactly but I don't like to think too far ahead so you haven't thought alternative no I don't careers, like thinking or? too far ahead people set like goals long distance goals and shit that's too much for me I already feel like I'm living it and then I just carry on doing that you know carry on day by day already living the final goal, the goal of being the world champion. I already carry myself like I'm a world champion. I already speak like I'm a world champion. And, and that's it. I just carry on day by day. So I'll take it as it comes. A lot Again, of like I said, you were asking, asking me about the future. I'll let, you, I'll let you know a little bit closer. You know what I mean? As far All I can see right now is the gold. That's all I can see. Some MMA fighters at the moment are transitioning into Hollywood. And it's mm -hmm. almost like a stepping stone into the career after fighting. Mm -hmm. Is that something you'd consider? Have you had offers? What do you think of the, the guys who are fighting and acting? Get paid. Get paid. You know what I mean? It is, it, I have some things lined up for after the, for after the fight. Um, I mean, talks with people. If, again, if it involves money, it's me again. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm going to show up and, and again, make, make money. This is what this is about. It's, it, it's, it's about the money. If, if it, what else is it about, really? What else is it about? So acting has definitely crossed your mind, at least? Money has crossed my mind. <laughs> and acting brings money. So who knows what's around Again, who knows what's around the corner? Again, I don't think too far ahead. I push it to the side. I just push all of that to the side and hit the gym. Um, one thing um, Neil Series coach Andy Ryan always mentions is that once you got into the UFC, you were very good about making sure you brought other people with you, obviously most importantly your teammates, but mm -hmm. also fellow countrymen. So mm -hmm. when you go through a night like UFC Dublin and you see five Irish fighters mm -hmm. from three different clubs, mm -hmm. uh, all winning on the night, all representing Irish MMA so well on the night, how does that make you feel? Unbelievable. I can't put into words how, 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 how proud I am of, of, of that. To be able to even be considered that I've done something. Because I didn't do, really I done nothing. I showed up and I fought. Those people done their own work. They put in their own hours. They followed their own path to get, where they're, where, to get here. But to even be cons considered to have helped them a little bit, that's phenomenal. But to watch it, hap watch it unfold live, that's a moment in history. That's a historic moment that will be watched for years, for long after we're gone. So it, it's phenomenal. I get goosebumps even thinking about it. My teammate Ashing Daly is over in the Ultimate Fire. Ashing Daly has been with me since since I started the game. Since the ge since the team was three strong, me, Ash, and Tom, and Roddy four strong. Back then, in a little hall with water dripping out of the thing, 
She's a little girl and she's sparring us. She's over there in Vegas now trying to compete on the Ultimate Fighter Show, trying to fight for that belt, fight for that contract with everything she has. And I went over there and I, I, when I was in Vegas, they let me go see her. And it was an emotional thing. But no, I can't put it into words. We bl blood, sweat and tears uh, go into this, into this journey, into this chase. And to see everyone else get, 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 some, get, get, some, get their credit, the credit they deserve, it's phenomenal. And the future of MMA in Ireland then, can you see the next wave of Irish fighters? 100%. Percent. UFC? 100%. Percent. I believe the next wave will be even better. The, n the next wave have a path. The next wave, they can see the journey. They can follow wh what, way it, what way it went. And then, of course, there's kids coming in. There's parents coming in with their kids from like that height, bringing them into the gym. The man, dad by the side, encouraging it. That's never like that. That's going to go to a next level when you have the parents encouraging the dream. You know what I mean? And regardless of, people, again, people can say it's barbaric and martial arts is barbaric or this game is it's too, it's too much, you know what I mean? It's two men beating each other or whatever. The martial arts life will give you a discipline, will give you dedication, will give you a drive that you won't get nowhere else. So whatever these kids that come in that, that size with their parents, whatever they decide to do, whether they decide to conquer the martial arts world, the fighting game, or whether they want to go and conquer the business world. Whatever they decide to do, training for combat sport, training martial arts will give them that confidence to go and excel in anything. So people can, can criticize about it all they want, but the results speak for themselves. And seeing these little kids come in this size, it's, it, it's good times. Good times ahead, I see. And do you think now that that's it, MMA is going to be a mainstream sport in Ireland? 100%. It's going, it's it, it always grow. has. It all, Martial arts has been a part of Irish culture for life. Everyone, every kid has done karate. Every kid has come up and done taekwondo it's here and there. You know, everyone knows someone that does a little bit. Now it's just, now it's a bit more public knowledge. Now people are actually just aware that, hang on, this is something that we, we, we enjoy and we take part in. It's part of something that we've been doing for years upon years. So again, it grows from strength to strength. So who knows what's, what, what's next, but it's good times ahead, I believe, for martial arts and... And, and just for life in general. I know you've got to head back to the gym for training, so thanks a million for your time. The very best of luck on the 27th of September and look forward to talking to you in the future on the way to the title. Sweet, thank you so much. The